Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to introduce you to a web page which is called Lola, which is a German web page that collects information, hotlines, etc. for prostituted women in Germany. And I'm going to do a response video to one of their videos that they do to advise prostituted women on how to stay safe. Even though I have problems with a lot of the content on the page, I think it's still valuable. It still comprises a lot of important information for prostituted women, for those that have internet access. So I don't think the people who made this webpage have necessarily bad intentions, and I don't think all the work they do is bad. But what I want to criticize and what I find pretty much undeniable is that their philosophy is that prostitution in itself is not dangerous for women. It's not bad. It's just a normal job. That's the idea that they try to sell us. But their own information reveals that they, they know it's not true. So if you want to look up this information yourself, I posted a link to the website in the description. And the first thing that you'll see is that you get to choose between five languages. German, Bulgarian, Turkish, Romanian, and English. So that's the first way that the page reveals that prostitution is not a job like any other. Because those are East European countries who are a lot poorer than Germany, from which women are routinely trafficked. And some do come, you know, without a threat of violence. But like I always say... Poverty can be a pimp just as powerful as a man that breathes down your neck. Okay, let's dive right into the video. Safer work. Working safer in prostitution. So right off the bat, they say safer, not safe. So they're kind of admitting there is no safe prostitution. There is only safer. There's a few things you can do. But ultimately, you cannot be safe. And I know a lot of people will say, well, what about nurses? Or what about someone working in a bank? They might be attacked. And that's true. They might be attacked. The frequency is nowhere close to what prostituted women have to go through. And we'll see in this video. That's not a fair comparison. Most of your customers only want one thing from you. And that is to spend some nice moments with you. I'll, I'll try to make this short because I could probably write a 10-page essay about how that sentence is messed up. This supposed nice time entails for the woman that she is going to be with a man who might be twice as old as, as she is or three times as old, who she is most probably not attracted to, maybe even repulsed by, and she has to bear his smell while he is close to her, on top of her, while he, she has to let him penetrate her, ejaculate on her. Uh, play out his porn fantasies. That's the nice time we're talking about. A sexual encounter where one person gets to dictate to the other what to do, where a man gets to dictate to a woman what to do, and she has to bear it. Rachel Moran, an Irish survivor of prostitution, said, the skills that you need for prostitution are you need to be able to press your impulse to throw up because the johns are disgusting. And second, you have to uh, try not to cry because you're going to be scared a lot of the time and you're going to be in pain uh, because if you're getting penetrated and you're not aroused, that is at best uncomfortable, at worst extremely painful. And you're going to have to try and fight your urge not to run away. And actually this video is going to confirm and explain to us all the reasons why that is true. As you well know, there are some customers who have bad intentions and sometimes they can even be violent. Well, I'm glad that they admit that there's an issue. So they've presented to us the statistically most likely perpetrator of violence against a prostitute woman. I've looked at several uh, stats on police reports. When it comes to violence against prostitute women in Germany, um, when it comes to murders, the most likely perpetrator is a John. More than half, somewhere between 50 and 75% of all extreme forms of violent assault, meaning attempted murder and murder in Germany, were committed by Johns. So I'm glad that they identify the correct perpetrator. Here are some tips how you can protect yourself from assaults. Please tell me in what other job you need to give your employees videos how not to get raped or murdered. They're not going to use the words rape or murder. They're going to say attacked, assaulted. 
but the truth is that prostitute women are at risk of being uh, raped, robbed, and murdered by their customers. But if you made a video where you use these words and you talked about what actually happens, that would be pretty much unwatchable. I don't know if any of you have been to a street where women are being prostituted out in the open, but they usually don't smile. They will smile, you know, if they're trying to um, attract a John, but a lot of the times you can tell how they're actually feeling from what their face looks like when they don't have to put up a front um, for the men buying their bodies. I do recommend, if you've never actually uh, seen a woman in prostitution, if there's a way that you can be safe in that part of town, you know, go there. Look at what it's like. Look how they're out there, even if the weather is shit if it's freezing cold, or if it's burning hot. Many uh, women on the street will even stand there, you know, during the day, not just at night. I'm not saying go there and gawk at them like animals in a zoo. What I want is for people to realize the humanity of prostituted women. They're not sex-crazed animals. They're people. They feel hungry and cold and tired, and they feel pain, and... That's all part of the reality of street prostitution. If you have any sort of romanticized views of street prostitution, it's going to bust that faster than anything I can tell you. You should always stand in a bright place on the road so that you can see everything and others can see you too. There's a lot of issues with this. I mean, the video doesn't say if assault happens to the woman, it's her fault, but this whole thing you have to protect yourself. There is this dangerous territory where it can cross over to being victim blaming. Where you're saying, well, why didn't you, you know, tell your mate that you were going with this punter to that place? I'm not saying that the organization who made this video blames prostitute women for violence that happens to them, but I have seen it. Like, I have seen people from the pro-sex work political side say that women who experienced violence in prostitution and who were traumatized were too weak or not organized enough, not careful enough, so I'm always worried. I should also add that most women in prostitution do not need these safety tips. They know this. They, they learn this so fast. If you find a customer threatening or strange, there is no reason why you should not refuse him. You can choose your own customers. Go by your instinct. Well, I'm glad that they say that, but the reality is a lot more complicated. So first of all, a lot of sexual predators are good at pretending to be nice guys. Every woman who knows a sexual predator will probably know one who is kind, uh, a gentleman. I certainly know some rapists who are really good at hiding their actual nature. It's, like, think about it. Just taking this example of a woman prostituted on the street. She goes up to the car. She has, like, two minutes to try and judge this man she has probably never met and try to see if he's violent. Prostitute women in street prostitution do, over the years, develop. You could call them people skills, I guess. They can spot a bad vibe quite quickly. Like, they'll look in the back of the car. Does he have ropes there? Does he have anything weird there? If they're a uh, so-called escort visiting uh, the home of a John, they will scan and check the place pretty quickly. But really, the span of time they have is, is really short. This does not increase their safety very much. And then when it comes to brothels, I mean, the women are put in a lineup very often. Or their profiles and photos are shown to Johns, and the Johns pick the woman. And then they're sent to a room together. She doesn't pick the John. It's not like the Johns line up, and then the women walk around the room, and they're like, oh, I'll pick that one, he looks nice and young. I'll pick that one, he has a friendly smile. <laughs> no, the Johns pick the women. And, and also, refusing Johns is a risky thing in itself for two reasons. For one, many women cannot refuse a John because they need the money. If she needs to pay her rent and she needs another Johns, you know, this particular night to pay her rent the next day, and there aren't many hours left, there's a lot of situations where a woman can't say no because she needs the money. That's how the system of prostitution works. Because otherwise, you know, women would be extremely picky. They would pick, you know, probably men their age. 
men that they've had some time to get to know. Even that won't guarantee their safety, but you know, they'd be really picky. And all these disgusting older men who are rude, who smell bad, who come to the brothel or, you know, straight drunk, they'd refuse them if they could. But the reason that these guys still will always find a woman who they can get access to is because of economic desperation. A lot of these women can't say no. Another reason why it's risky to say no is Johns can get mad for being rejected. Like, Johns have murdered prostitute women because the women said, you're a creep, I don't want anything to do with you. So, saying no isn't safe. And of course, what they, I don't think they mentioned ever in this whole video is the pimp, you know? A woman might say, I don't feel safe with that guy. And the pimp might say, well, you still owe me this amount of money. You still have to go and do it. So, of course, if women, traffic women, women under tight pimp control, which is most women in prostitution, they get to say no pretty much never. Every service has a price. So say yours. Avoid misunderstandings. Another thing is the language barrier. Like I said, even pro-sex work organizations, when they do studies on what's going on in the sex industry, even they will usually admit that there's a high proportion of foreigners in developed countries like Germany. Something like 75 to 85, I've even seen some people say 90 to 95 percent of prostitute people in Germany are not German. So a lot of these women from East Europe, from North Africa, they don't speak German. Often they don't even speak English. They might speak, you know, the very basic sentences that they need and they might be able to say a price, but not much more. So in theory, the prostitute when will say up front, I'm going to um, be willing to do ABCDE, but not FGH, and then they'll stick to it. Uh, and she'll get paid up front. But that's not what happens in reality a lot of the time. Money cannot replace consent. Because consent be can be revoked. But if you've been paid, then you, you've created a situation where the person who has paid really strongly feels that they are owed. That's why selling sex is not like selling anything else. If you sell a hamburger, while the person's eating, you're not going to take it out of their mouth and say, I changed my mind, you can't have this hamburger. But when it comes to sexual encounters, of course there are times when people will change their mind. Especially in prostitution, where the sexual acts will often be uncomfortable or even painful to the prostitute woman because she isn't aroused. Of course women are not hamburgers, but if you think that sex is a commodity, then sex is not much different from a hamburger. But if you've been paid to do something, and then you change your mind midway through, the other person, the John, is going to feel cheated. Like there are women being murdered because of this. Uh, if you don't believe me, subscribe to my channel. Subscribe as a hater, that's fine. Uh, subscribe as a political opponent. I'm going to make a video very soon. I've collected the data. I've looked at over 100 cases of completed and attempted murders in Germany. Looked at every single one of them. There are Johns who kill women because the women say no. And there are women being murdered over tiny amounts of money. John's in front of court saying um, she refused to do anal sex, so I got mad, and it escalated, and I strangled her to death. Now, I'm not saying every John will do that, but like this video shows, that risk is ever-present. And a lot of John's uh, will change their mind midway. Like, they'll say, oh no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch your anus, I'm not gonna try and kiss you, I'm not gonna, you know, pull off the condom, but then they do. You can do all the negotiating up front, and the guy might still feel entitled to break boundaries. John's trying to pressure prostitute women into doing more and more extreme things, and doing more than was originally agreed to is daily life for these women. And then there's what's called flat rate brothels in Germany. They're called all-inclusive in New Zealand, which means the John pays one fee, one price, and gets to do anything he wants to the body of the prostitute woman. Which means, literally, that her job description is not to have sexual boundaries. Now, additionally, um, prostitute women have a reputation to maintain if they're known for being difficult, if they're known for refusing sex acts, if they're known for, you know, trying to get away from a John while things are already in process. That's going to be bad for her in the sense that the women that she's competing with, like remember, prostitution is like any other industry in the sense that there is a ton of competition and it's carried out on the 
bodies of women. The demands of the market will demand more or less on the bodies of women. You, you can say the bodies are not the products, but that's the reality of the industry. Don't be persuaded into doing anything you don't want to do. How do you qualify what a prostitute woman wants to do? You know, she does not want to sleep with the man. Otherwise, they would be having sex for mutual pleasure. They're not. She's giving him sexual access to her body or she's being made to do that so that she can make a living. Just look at this example. There's this guy. He is, what, twice her age, three times her age? Taking them on his side, do you think that she wants to give him a blowjob? That she wants him on top of her and inside her? I don't think so. The system of prostitution works in the way that money replaces consent. Money isn't consent, it replaces consent. The vast, vast majority of the time, the prostitute woman is not attracted to the John. She does not want to have sex with him, but she does need the money. What, what depresses me in, in the conversation about prostitution is that so many people don't seem to have an issue with the commodification of sexuality and of sex. Giving a blowjob or getting penetrated is not a meaningless activity. It's not like shoveling dirt. It's not like selling something over a counter. It's your body. Like, you have to smell, hear, taste that person. You're going to want to be, you know, smelling, tasting, hearing people that you're actually attracted to, not some guy twice your age. I know I'm rambling a bit, but just, I mean, just think about this. In this situation, we're talking about what does she want to do, what does she not want to do. Do you think she's actually attracted to him? This whole discussion is kind of bizarre once you really think about it. Always be paid first. And then, never put that money with the rest of yours. Because he might try and steal your money. You know, he might go grab into your back and take that money and you're going to hope he then runs off and doesn't go taking the rest. <laughs> because in prostitution, it happens routinely that your so-called customer is going to try and take your money. Talking again about a prostitute women being murdered in Germany, when I looked at the murders, one of the most likely motives after, you know, um, wanting to cover up rape, wanting to control a woman as a pimp or an ex-partner, or being unsatisfied with the practice or the price of a woman, was men, you know, stealing the money from a prostitute woman and killing her in the process. And she was collateral damage to a guy robbing her. When you get into a car, check how to open the door because you might have to run away, because he might try to rob, rape, and murder you. I'm not saying this to shock. I'm saying this because they're leaving this out, all the uncomfortable stuff, all the scary stuff. They're leaving it out, but we need to talk about this. Like, it cannot be normal that a certain class of women in society have to accept it as just a normal occupational hazard to get robbed, raped, or murdered by their customers. Like, this can't be normal. This can't be a normal job. Memorize your customers' looks, any special characteristics, and your customer's car. Just think about what that's like. You go to work. These guys, who you're probably pretty grossed out by, pay for sexual access to your body. And the whole entire time, before, during, and after. So, like, even while they are penetrating you, while they're inside you, while you're doing the most intimate thing that humans can do with each other, while there is no space between your bodies. In the back of your mind... You have to be ready at any moment to fight for your life or run for your life or scream for help. If you've read abolitionist literature, you probably at some point come across the argument in scientific works that explain how the trauma of prostitution can be a lot like the trauma from war or torture. And if you think about that, that constant paranoia, that constant pain, constant disgust, constant fear. It is a lot like a war zone. It is a good idea that a workmate knows where you are going with your customer. Never go too far away. Because he might try to kidnap you and take you home or take you someplace and torture you. I'm always telling you the most extreme thing that could happen because I'm sure if you applied for a job and it said occupational hazard, you might be kidnapped and murdered by your customer, you would probably not find that acceptable. Every customer is different. That can be physically as well as mentally strenuous. John's being different is not what makes prostitution tough. 
what makes prostitution tough is a lot of things. But first of all, it's the sheer number of people that the prostitute woman has to make herself sexually available to. So a lot of people think that a prostitute woman picks up, what, like a couple of johns a month? Maybe one or two a day? No, it's something like five to twenty men a day. The female body isn't made for that. No one's body, including, you know, I'm talking about women here, but of course prostitute men experience the same thing. Your body isn't made for that many men that you are not attracted to, penetrating your body, using your body. It's exhausting, it's painful, and yes, it's traumatizing. Having sex that you don't want to be having just to pay your bills is traumatizing. To the customers being different, are there variations? Yes. Not every customer is going to try and murder her. I'm not suggesting that. But even even a guy who is, you know, relatively nice. Most Johns don't care about the orgasm of the prostitute woman. They don't care about her pleasure. But even those who do, you know, they fail to see, they fail to care that she isn't there to have mutual pleasure. She's just there to bear what they do to her and then be able to pay some bills. E even those nice guys are sexually entitled. That's what all Johns have in common, sexual entitlement. Whether they care about how the prostitute woman feels if she's enjoying herself or if she's in pain or whether they get off on the pain, sure, the sadist types are probably among the worst. But even the nice guys who care about their performance even they feel they have a right to her body and they have a right to dictate to her what happens. Allow yourself a break. Have a meal and get enough sleep. Your job is a very hard one. If you come to agreements with your workmates, then you can help each other. Yeah, those are great tips for every job. I think prostitution is not a job like any other. A lot of the, the women whose testimonies I've read and who I've talked to, they don't get breaks. Or they get breaks that are very short. You know, some of these women, they have to they have to work insane shifts. They, they get there at night. You know, they might start work at 10 and then they finish 8 hours later at 6 in the morning. Some women have to do 10, 12, even 18 and sometimes even 24 hour shifts. That means 5, 10, 20 men a night. But this idea that the woman can choose is bullshit. For the vast majority of prostitute women, again, it's either poverty or a pimp. They tell her when to work. They tell her how long. They tell her how many men. They tell her which men. There are prostitute women who have some control over, you know, the times that they are available to Johns and, and when they're not available to Johns. Those do exist, but they're the exception. This video suggests, you know, that woman in the back at the bar, it's like, a motherly type, madam, you know, who takes good care of her girls, gives them an apple. That's just, ah, the imagery in itself, like, not just the voiceover, the imagery in itself is so misleading. Some of you listeners might comment that, you know, how can I criticize manipulative imagery if I'm putting very emotive images myself? Well, here's the difference. This whole video, the Lola video, is staged. You know, these people are probably actors. Even if they're not, it's staged. Um, but the images I'm using, those are not models. Those are actual prostituted women being photographed in the places where they're actually being prostituted. Sometimes I use stock photos or Pixar Bay, but if you can see the face of a woman, it's photographs being taken by journalists and the like who actually go into real-life brothels. Um, the majority of pimps are male. Those that are female, while for many of them it's the only way that they themselves can escape having to be prostituted, they're not necessarily a lot nicer than the men. There is a lot of cruelty from female pimps as well. Don't be fooled by this. Oh, did I mention that, of course, prostitution is the only so-called occupation where a woman might catch an STD? from a so-called customer or uh, an unwanted pregnancy. I know a lot of sex uh, work proponents, you know, they try to reduce that risk and they're like, oh, we're gonna hand out condoms. At the end of this video, I'm gonna present a radical idea of what you can do instead of making prostitution slightly safer. Because there is a way to make prostitute women as safe as any normal woman's society, which is not 100% safe, but a hell of a lot safer than, you know, prostitution. Don't let yourself be defenseless through drugs and alcohol. Be professional. Be professional. 
again, this is kind of kind of victim blamey, right? Because it's like you got to keep up this appearance. Like if you take drugs, then you are unprofessional. Oh, so they admit one way to cope with all the things that are happening to your body and your mind during prostitution, like constant paranoia. One way to cope is, of course, drugs and alcohol. Now, not every prostitute woman is going to do that, but a lot of them are. I mean, there are prostitute women who get into prostitution after they get addicted and due to that addiction. It might even take several years until a woman starts, you know, drinking or taking a drug. Prostitution does that because in order for you to be able to deal with the physical pain and the psychological paranoia, in order to not really be present, not really be in your body the best you can, uh, is to be drunk or high. And that addiction, of course, can be lethal. It doesn't matter where you work. Well, in a lot of sense, it doesn't matter where you work because you are going to have... The nature of prostitution doesn't change. Whether you are um, being bought by a homeless man on the street or by Donald Trump in a five-star hotel. Both men are going to be entitled to your body. Both men uh, are likely to be sexually aggressive. Of course, you're going to make different sums of money, but really, can money pay for trauma? When looking at the murders of prostitute women in Germany, try to see if there was a pattern on where women were being murdered. There isn't really. The most common place for them to be killed is actually in apartment prostitution. So indoor prostitution is actually extremely risky. But murders also happen on the street, and they happen in brothels, including legal brothels. Subscribe, because I'm going to show you the data. I'm going to name names in places. All the legal brothels in Germany where prostitute women have been murdered. While there were pimps walking around, you know, or bodyguards, you want to call them bodyguards, there were bodyguards walking around in the brothel, and women still got murdered by Johns in brothels. It's insane. Never lock the door when taking a customer to your room. It should always be easy for you to get to the door. Because he might try to rob, rape, or murder you. Doesn't matter whether you're indoor or on the street, this can happen to you. And again, the paranoia. Like, how do you not go crazy? Your so-called customer, you know, whom you have to let get very close and even penetrate you. In the back of your mind, there's always this part of your brain that's just ready for fight or flight, you know? If you should get into a dangerous situation, it is always important for you to be able to run away quickly. Always run against the direction of the traffic and yell as loud as you can, so as to get attention. Yeah, running away quickly is kind of tough if you're in, you know, got four walls around you. And I mean, in that situation, he's letting her out of the car. You know, if he's trying to attack her, he would not be letting her out of the car. He would lock the door. But you should always be able to run away. I mean, for fuck's sake, you cannot run in high heels. Like, you're giving them all these advices on how to escape and how to not get locked in anywhere, even though that's really difficult for a woman to maneuver and makes them paranoid and sick. Why not the advice to not wear fucking high heels? I know it sounds like I'm laughing, but actually this is incredibly serious. And I'm angry. Because the people who made this video are trying to normalize prostitution as a normal occupation, when their own videos just prove that that's not the case. If you should be attacked, the next police station or information center will be pleased to help you. I don't think that most of the people involved in its production had bad intentions, that they want harm to come to prostitute women. No, I think they genuinely want them to be safer. I'm just going to say several things. So for one, yeah, it's a fairly good idea to go to the police. There are absolutely cases of, you know, robbery, rape and murder against prostitute women where the police was helpful, where they caught the perpetrator. What is kind of paradoxical and doesn't make a lot of sense is that um, the same people who make this video and who say that prostitution is just a job are the people telling us that the police should get involved as little as possible, that the police can't be trusted, the police cannot go and inspect brothels or cannot go and, and try to find trafficking victims because the police is the, supposedly the number one danger to prostitute women. It's not that I don't get skepticism against the police. After all, a lot of policemen are severely undertrained in the issues of prostitution. They're quite likely to hold all sorts of prejudice against prostituted women. Which is why, if I had the, the power and the money to organize anyone going into brothels, it would be 
You know, social workers, preferably women. I get why prostitute women don't trust the police. When I looked at the murder cases in Germany, there were two cases of policemen killing women. They were both retired and one of them was pimping. So it's not like I naively believe that policemen are somehow these perfect virtuous people. Please have a look around. There are some more videos to other themes. Let me just point out quickly who sponsored this video. It says Ministry for Healthcare, um, Care of the Elderly, and Emancipation of the German state Nordrhein-Westfalen. So, my government is sponsoring this stuff via a ministry that has emancipation in its title. I struggle to find words that are adequate to des describe how ashamed that makes me feel, how disappointed in my own government. In, in the case of Germany, the pro-sex work lobby really cannot claim that they don't have the upper hand. They're getting money from the ministry and they're getting money out of the pockets of pimps. Okay? But now, to my conclusion. I'm going to present to you my radical idea. How about no woman? has to let a man get sexual access to her body in an enclosed space or, you know, in a space on the street, out of sight, from other people who may try to rob, beat, rape, or kill her. How about not calling mortal fear of a customer an occupational hazard? How about no woman has to live in a state of constant paranoia and fear of rape and violence by her customer or her boss. How about not normalizing prostitution? How about looking at the information material that you're making and connecting the dots? There is a growing movement of prostitution survivors, of women saying, we want out. Let's support them. Let's get them out.